Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we won't be working on the tank, instead we're going to make a start on the XR311. Right then, first things first, the manual. It isn't quite as good as the more recent manuals, but they do have nice sections suggesting the bits you're going to need to complete the model, radio gear and all that good stuff. For the build we'll also need a few tools, screwdrivers, a big one and a small one, some pliers and some cutters, just the usual kit of tools. Ok, step 1. And this kit does throw you into the deep end a bit if you've not built a kit before. We need some plastic bits, G5 and G6, which conveniently are on a sprue marked with a G. And of course, near the parts are the numbers. Clip off the parts with some side cutters, making sure to keep track of which is which. We're going to need some fixings, and unlike modern Tamiya kits, there's no real method to which bag is which. They're not nicely marked for each section. If you look carefully, you can work out which ones you need to open. Not surprisingly, most of the build comes from the bag with the most screws in. To keep them all safe, the bag gets tipped into a plastic container, and you can get these from most supermarkets. They usually come filled with some sort of sweet, edible stuff. From another bag, we need some of these brass bits, a flanged widget with an M3 thread. The rest of the bits from the bag can go into another pot. There's a few more bits we need, and as always, there's a nice two-scale list to the left. All we need to do is fill it all out. For this section, it's four M3 nuts, two split washers, four M2 nuts, six M3 screws, and four M2 screws. Now this bit I do like about this kit. They start you off with a nice meaty center section of the chassis. It's quite a nice bit of folded aluminium. Some of the edges are a little bit sharp, so we're going to have to keep an eye out when we get to the wiring. For the first part, we need to fit the front torsion bar mount. To fit it, the kit uses a pair of M3 screws and plain nuts. To stop them falling out, they want us to use some Loctite. The problem with that is if you get any on the plastic parts, most Loctite will break it down, making the parts brittle around the nuts. So, instead, wherever I can, I'm going to swap the plain nuts for nylocks. As long as the screws are long enough, it will stop them falling apart and not require the Loctite. Pop a screw through the chassis, slide the mount on, and spin on a nut. Same on the other side, then do up the screws, being very careful to line up the nut with the hex hole in the plastic. The other mount is just the same, two screws and two nylock nuts. The next bit will be the front body mount. Take one of the M3 screws, add one of the split washers, insert through the chassis, Lay the body mount over the exposed thread and install one of the brass widgets. You could use a little bit of Loctite here too for extra security. Just don't glue the body mount to the chassis. Same applies to the other screw. When it's all done up, it should be quite free to move around. OK, last part of step one. We need to fit the side bits. Mainly used as a nice place to mount the radio and ESC. They fit using the M2 hardware. Screw in through the top, aluminium bit on the bottom and a nut to hold it all together. This is all metal, so Loctite is very necessary. My only concern is it's going to leave the screw heads poking right where the battery rests. With vibration from running, it will rub pretty badly. We might end up having to use a little bit of foam tape to pad things if there's enough clearance under the body. Alright, step two. This one is the front hubs. There's a few plastic bits to find. We need the hubs themselves and the parts to make up the uprights. It's quite a neat, compact setup. From the presentation box, we need the stub axles. There's two types. We want the ones with a slot for an e-clip. The other ones with a flat ground in the end are for the rear. For bearings, we need four of the flange ones. These are a bit awkward as they're not to a standard modern size. It would be great to replace them with proper bearings, but it wouldn't be a straight swap. Once we've found all the fixings, we can put them together. The bushes should press into the hubs. They require quite a bit of pressure to get them in. The most important thing is to get them in nice and straight. If you angle them, they'll distort the plastic and they could end up misaligned. You can check with the stub axle. It should drop straight through and spin freely. If it catches on the second bushing, they're not aligned. You could try lightly squeezing them in a vise, just enough to get them in line, but not so much you squash the plastic. When it's all nice and straight, apply some grease. We want to get a nice layer between the stub axle and the bushes. You can use the axle to spread it around a bit and make sure there's no dry spots. Wipe off any excess from the back and install the e-clip. If you're worried about losing the clip, install it with the parts in a clear plastic bag. If it pings off, it won't go far. The uprights are made from three bits and held together with a long screw. 
Tamiya provides some plain nuts again, but the screws are long enough to use nylocks, so I'll be swapping them out. When they're assembled, they should turn nice and freely. If not, there's probably a bit of a twist between the upper and lower bits. If you fiddle with them, you should be able to get them to free up quite nicely. Oh, and when putting them together, make sure you build one left and one right. Step 3. The front arms. Like a lot of Tamiya kits, the arms are built up. They don't self-align quite as well as the more recent kits, but they should do the job nicely. We need four of each half from the E sprues, a load of M3 screws from the other parts bags, and some nuts. I'm going to use a little bit of grease on these bits as the joints are a bit stiff. Worst case, we'll need to give them a good clean after the first couple of runs as the grease picks up the grit. Like the other bits, I'll be replacing the plain nuts with nylocks to avoid getting any Loctite on the plastic. The nuts neatly drop into slots, making them fairly easy to assemble, but it's still a bit of a game trying to hold it all together so they don't fall apart. They make for very neat little assemblies, and a lot less sloppy than I was expecting. Next we'll be getting the steering put together, but I'm afraid that's going to have to wait until next time. I hope you enjoyed the video, sorry it's a bit short again, I really wanted to get the whole front assembly done, but at least we managed a complete page. Anyway, thanks for watching, like if you liked, and of course if you're not already, why not subscribe? Bye guys!